I welcome everyone online. And I'm uh, Ming Luan Li, Associate Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I also teach uh, several courses for the audio and the music engineering program. So today, uh, I want to first uh, briefly introduce our audio and music engineering program. And we also have like two student representatives and also we have professors here can answer your questions. And so now you can see that there is a QR code. You can scan this QR code and you can visit our website for more information. Although you can, I cannot see you, but what are the areas of audio and music engineering? You may think about using, I hi Siri. No, hi Siri. Okay, something yes. like this. Okay, <laughs> and or it's a very hot topic today. Chat GPT, Open AI. You may ask, yeah, Chat GPT. So if you go here, you will find that if you ask the area, probably you can type. For yeah, you can type the areas you know, and you will find that oh, so there are some example: digital audio workstations, audio interfaces, microphones, studio monitors, plugins. MIDI controllers, or if you click some product list, you will find, wow, speakers, headphones, earbuds, sound bars, amplifiers, receivers, microphones, blah, 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 like all of this belongs to our area. And, but not just that, if you go back to check, let me go back to the slides. Let me check what happened to the, I cannot switch to here. Sorry for that. Let me see what happened to this. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Hmm. I'm very sorry about this. I don't know why I cannot switch to that. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. I cannot switch to, to my slides and I cannot close it. Hmm. Let me figure out a way to do that. So let me close. Uh, Why don't you stop sharing for a minute and then, and then try starting sharing uh, again? I cannot click stop sharing for now. Let's see. Oh, okay. okay, now I can stop sharing. Okay. Very sorry about that. Yeah. So that's also the problem we want to deal with because sometimes, yeah, we may have audio and video problem. Yeah. So now stop sharing. It looks like, uh, let me close. Let me check it. Okay, it looks like I can share it now. So these are our areas. We have like audio recording. Why is not? Okay. What happened? I've never made this problem. Okay, acoustics and video game design, web audio, audio software design, film and the TV sound design, entertainment, speakers, TV, also like microphones, computer design, car audio, and electronics, electric guitar, and speakers, wow, that design is so cool, and the broadcast, and audio signal processing, and some consumer products like headphones, and the smart assistants, that speech recognition, and the more. And for our program, we have our a bachelor's of science program in audio and music engineering, about 80 majors. We also have many minors and we also have ME, ME clusters. And for our graduate program, we have our master's program in ECE with concentration in acoustics, audio and music signal processing. And we also have our PhD program. And we also have study abroad programs and 
Birmingham City University, Australia National University, Nanyang Technology University, and Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And for our curriculum, we focus on, so these are the major parts, uh, kind of uh, essential parts like math and physics, writing requirements, and elective courses. But for the engineering courses, we have kind of introduction courses, recording arts and the sound design, acoustics, audio electronics, signal processing, and the software design. So our curriculum covered some very important parts of AME. And you can see, if you want to find more information, just visit our website under undergraduate overview. And you can see a lot of information like our curriculum guide there. And last year, this year is we celebrate our 10th anniversary. And last year we had good news and our program already got kind of a bad um, accreditation. And what is that? That's kind of very critical uh, evaluation of our program and make sure our students, yeah, they are well prepared to enter their careers. Today, I check the website and if you type audio engineering, you will find that our program is the only program uh, that's uh, get accredited. And we have many courses and these courses, we focus on kind of a design, uh, design projects. We have some portfolios acoustics portfolio, audio signal processing portfolio, electronics portfolio. And for my audio software design courses, we have three projects. Then my students design drum machine applications, also very cool plugins. So the upper one here, so the crunchy course that's designed by uh, Jessica Law, I just is here, and the bottom one that's designed by uh, Sydney Haupt, and yeah, Sydney is also here. And then we also have kind of senior design, a lot of cool projects, and this was one of the coolest projects. Hey guys, I'm gonna be going over um, the tile what piano, is that? which is the main um, instrument in our scene. Using a, um, a if you look around, you'll see that there are other instruments around, which my uh, teammates will discuss. It goes back to white. Oh, you can see, actually then use the grab controller the trigger the one on a tile and pick the tile up. Um, this is cool. Um, so you can actually play chords if you wanted to, um, because you just. But yeah, that's our... learn how to do that. And we also have two recording studios. And the Gavard Hall recording studio is kind of an industry level recording studio. And that's designed by our Grammy Award winner, uh, Professor Steve Riesner. And we have like a pretty big recording studio and also a control room so that we can accommodate more students. And our old studio, the Retina Hall recording studio, yeah, you can see that we can still um, accommodate uh, several students and they can also work there to record uh, bands. On... And this is our computer lab. I teach courses there and this is for kind of sound design and audio software design. We have 40 like uh, Mac Pros. And we also have like a very expensive surround sound speakers and subwoofer there. And this is our immersive audio lab. And we have kind of 24 speakers and we can use that to play kind of 3D immersive audio. We also have kind of head and torso simulator, binaural dummy head and hemisphere speaker and also kind of speaker array. Let me talk about our graduate placements. 
So our students can find internships pretty easy. And you can, you can see that there's a long list, Apple and Amazon, Adobe, Google, Harman, Microsoft, Meta. So that's our graduate placements and there are more. And our career path is, and our students can work on like electronics or audio software design, digital signal processing engineer, and acoustics counseling, recording, and sound design. And our faculty members focus on several different areas, even like special audio and recording, sound design, electronics, and machine learning. So you will find these are some of our research topics. And for example, we have research topic focus on like panel speakers. And we can also use panel speakers if you have like a flat uh, TV. And you can also hear the sound sources maybe from here to here. And since 2017, I started to record concerts at the Eastman School of Music and also the greater Rochester area. And I've recorded over 70 concerts. And I use this kind of cool microphone. And you will see that sometimes like this 32 channel. And so that's kind of, we call that the icon mic. And we also use this binaural dummy head to record 3D audio. And in that case, we can like uh, wear a VR headset and watch 3CT 3D video. And at the same time, we can hear binaural 3D audio. And you will find that, that this is uh, an example to show you. And you can also visit our channel, University of Rochester 3D Audio. So this is a concert I recorded at Eastman. So this is the Eastman saxophone patch project. And if you wear headphones, you rotate it, you can also hear head tracking binaural 3D audio. And Professor Ji Duan and his lab focus on something called computer audition. They also use machine learning. So you can see that they can use the computer to analyze music, to compose music, and also to hear speech, speech, and also other sound. So you will find this is an example. Oh, this is not composed by Bach. And if you listen to it, So this is composed uh, by an algorithm. And like this, speech communication. And on the left, we can also use kind of speech enhancement or separation. And for example, if there is kind of mixed audio. Moving R6 again. And we can separate like the sound. Been read by R6 again. So that's from the left. Okay. And also we can use listen to the speech and to classify different emotions. And on the right, we can also use speech to drive this kind of talking face. She had your dark suit and greasy washed water all year. And our students are encouraged to join the Audio Engineering Society. And they also have a lot of events, activities. And so this is our UR student chapter. So they have some game nights, trip to uh, inter internship Q&A, and they also have guest lectures. And we also support them uh, to our annual convention in uh, New York City. Okay, so this is a brief introduction to our AME program. 
And now I want to uh, invite our uh, student representatives to talk about their AME experiences. Uh, let's start with, hello, Jessa. Hi, Jessica, Jessica Luo, hi. And so Jessa, could you briefly talk about like uh, your AME experience? Thank you. Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Jessa or Jessica. Um, I'm a senior AME major. Um, let's see. Um, on top of all the course loads, obviously, that, that uh, Professor Lee has um, pointed out um, in the department, I am a, a teaching assistant for the recording classes for Professor Ressner, as well as Sydney, actually. Um, I do spatial audio research with Professor Lee, so do a lot of stuff with those um, cool looking and expensive mics. Um, we also have an audio engineering society, a student chapter in which I was uh, in charge of doing a lot of live um, recording sessions for the public, for musicians and students. Um, and yeah, I mean, I chose to go to the University of Rochester and do the AME program because of all of the um, music and tech um, focuses that I could do. I'm a musician myself. Um, I liked some technology things in high school. And so this is sort of a, a perfect um, marriage of those two. And Eastman School of Music is really cool to collaborate with. So, yeah. All right, yeah. so I'll go Thank ahead. You, Jessica. Yeah. Hi, Sydney. Yeah, hi, my name is Sydney. Um, just like Jessa, I am a senior AME major. Um, so when I started out, I was really mostly interested in the recording side of things. And like Jessa said, I'm also a TA for our recording classes right now with Professor Ressner. Um, so I really enjoyed all of that coursework. And I got the opportunity to intern at a recording studio, which I would say quite a few AME students do get to do if they choose to go down that route. Um, and yeah, that's all been very cool. And at the University of Rochester, I've gotten to experience the more electrical engineering side of the coursework as well. And I've found that now my primary interest is in hardware design. So I'm also a teaching assistant right now for our audio electronics courses and our audio electronics portfolio courses. Um, and I just really love all of the designing and the building of art audio hardware. So for example, um, my senior design project right now is a group project and we are designing a smart speaker and I get to build all of the hardware design and build all of the hardware part of that, uh, which is really interesting and a lot of fun. So I would say one of the greatest strengths of the AME program is that you get to try all of these different things. And even though I thought that I wanted to do recording, I found now that I'm interested in this other side of the program. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, I, so that's a kind of a brief introduction. And also I just wondering if you have any questions and you can uh, type your questions in the chat message box. Let me see if I can see it. Okay, uh, any questions? So we have Students, feel free to put those questions in the Q and A. Yes. Um, in the meantime, I can ask you uh, all a few questions that I see on the road. So I work in the admissions office, and um, you know we have a lot of students when we visit high schools and college fairs around the country that um, have questions about this department and this program. And so it's so fascinating to kind of get the, the scoop on on AME. Um, but uh, I'd I'd love to hear um, you know from both uh, Sydney and and Jessa. Um, did you kind of have this idea in, in your head of, of what, um, you know, this program was all about before you came to Rochester and how did that kind of change as you got to Rochester and you realized the different avenues and, and areas you could explore and what was available to you? 
I don't know if Jessica, if you want to go first or. <laughs> sure. I mean, Sydney touched on it a lot uh, just now. Um, I actually came to the University of Rochester not as an AME major or did not even want to do engineering, but um, I correctly during orientation switched over to AME. Um, I had an admissions interview actually with an AME a major when I came to first visit the campus and he had mentioned um, all of the different avenues that you could do and similar to Sydney as well I was interested in like the mixing the recording um, more of the creative side of the program um, and so that's why I guess at first I decided to not because I wanted to do something a bit more technical um, but then quickly taking like the first class, uh, Intro to Audio Music Engineering, um, teach, uh, uh, go, delves into a lot of the different technical aspects of uh, the major and the different avenues that you could explore. So I stuck with it then. Um, and then, yeah, all these different avenues of the, car, the coding software and the hardware um, has been very cool to explore. Yeah, so just to add a little bit onto that, um, like Jessa said, we both came in with the misconception that everybody has that the AME program is for like recording and for becoming an audio engineer, which some people are more successful with, but I think it's probably important to highlight that the AME curriculum is more in line with like an electrical engineering degree where you do do a lot of the very technical coding and um, design work and things like that in addition to like the you know creative classes so if you are somebody going into the program who isn't sure which direction you want to go which is definitely the case for me I wasn't super sure if I wanted to do a more creative degree or an engineering degree this is kind of a nice happy medium um, that I would definitely recommend thank you Sydney and I think we we got a few questions. And the first one, Jessa is typing. Oh, Jessa, can you just uh, unmute yourself and talk about the answer? Yeah, I started backspacing. <laughs> um, yeah, so can all students record music in the recording studio? Um, so we have two recording classes, um, basically a part one and a part two. And part one goes, um, teaches you how to use the Retner studio. So that was the second studio that uh, Professor Lee showed. And then in the second half, you get to learn how to use um, uh, the Gavit Studio. And once you've taken both of those classes, you get access to those studios for the rest of your time at the university. Um, so you do have to take those classes to get trained um, to use that stuff. But then once you do, you have swipe access, you can book it anytime you want um, to record anything that you want. But if you're a musician already and you like, you know, you have friends who are in the program and who have already taken it. You can always be a musician recording in those studios prior um, to, you know, engineering in them. So it's very um, easy to access either as a musician or um, as a student once you've taken those classes. Thank you, Jessa. And the next question is, is studying abroad offered to freshmen or when? And yeah, just our study abroad. But um, Professor Mark Barco, would you like to talk about this? <laughs> sure. I, I was just typing an answer, but um, generally students don't uh, study abroad in the freshman year, but uh, it's usually in the sophomore or junior year. And uh, in the freshman year, it's probably good to just focus on getting your math and physics and those things uh, behind you. But um, we do have an active uh, exchange program with Birmingham City University in the uh, in England, and uh, so every year we send a, a, a student or two over there, and they send a couple of students over here. And um, actually, Jessa uh, spent a semester over at Birmingham City University. So so that's but you can also go. You know, to other other universities. Right now, we have a student um, who's studying in Korea this semester. So, um, so that's open. Generally, not until the sophomore or junior year, though. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And Jessa, would you like to talk about more about your experience? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, just before I do, um, I'm pretty sure the university doesn't allow freshmen to go abroad until your summer after your first year. Um, I think that's just a general rule, uh, doing basically highlighting what Professor Baco said um, about you know wanting you to get accustomed to uh, campus life and figuring things out and then exploring other opportunities afterwards. Um, but yeah, I went to Birmingham City University uh, last spring, so a year ago um, in my uh, junior spring semester. Um, and yeah, I was able to take a lot of um, equivalent classes as well as extra classes that University of Rochester didn't have. Um, so obviously I did some like audio electronics and coding there, uh, but I was also able to learn about live sound um, and how to um, you know, mix live. Um, they actually had this one um, like club, I guess, that allowed you to basically rent out the equipment and go do sound at different venues around the city. So that was pretty cool, pretty great like real life experience. I also learned about um, mastering and they also have um, a, a conservatoire, but basically like a school of music like Eastman there that they closely collaborate with with recording. Um, and so I was able to just go there, try a lot of classes, learn about how they do things in audio. I was able to travel a lot there too, because everything's a lot closer. Train tickets are cheaper. I got to meet a lot of different people, um, a lot of audio professionals who I still um, are in contact with today and sometimes, you know, sometimes used to network and get future internship or job opportunities, but overall it's just a fun thing and I would highly recommend it to anyone who wants to do it. I think you're muted, Professor Lee. Professor Lee, you're on mute, I think. Yeah, so there is another question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nick. So how easy is it for AME students to use the facilities in uh, Eastman School? And Professor Baco is typing the answer. I think, yeah, we cannot use the facilities there, but we can go to a lot of free concerts there. And also, if you want to do research, uh, like I also record a lot of concerts there. So uh, some of the students also help me uh, record concerts. Yeah, let, let me let me just add a little bit. Um, you know, the physical facilities are one thing. Um, so we have two recording studios that students can access on the River Campus, and they there is a recording studio at Eastman, um, but they the students don't use it. It's just for recording all the student concerts. Um, there's an electronic music studio at, at Eastman, and you can take courses and uh, in, in electronic music and get access to that studio. Um, but probably the biggest thing that uh, AME students can, can avail themselves of is they can take uh, lessons down at Eastman and you can also take courses uh, from Eastman. So there's a shuttle bus that goes uh, back and forth all day. And uh, if you wanna take lessons, then you, you need to audition and uh, you don't have to be at any particular level, but the audition is just to place you with the right instructor. And so you can take lessons for credit at Eastman if you wish. Um, and so you can get uh, a lot out of the interactions with Eastman, but in terms of physical facilities, they really don't, other than practice rooms, there aren't that many facilities at Eastman other than the, the practice rooms and the concert halls. And, um, as Mainwan said, you can go to all the free concerts, and uh, the River Campus also has practice rooms, so there's no reason to go down to Eastman just to use a practice room or a piano. Um, there's lots of uh, uh, availability of those kinds of things on the River Campus. And you can also, Eastman has a kind of an instrument library, so if you play uh, an unusual instrument like the double bass and you want to play in an ensemble, 
um, you can go down and request uh, the the loan of an instrument from from that uh, lending library. So uh, those are well used and loved instruments, but they're still functional. <laughs> so so anyway, that's 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 pretty much the ways that you can uh, take advantage of Eastman's uh, resources. Thank you, Mark. And Eastman also has one of the best uh, music libraries in the world. So the Sibley Library. And you can also go there and to check out uh, mm -hmm. like books, music scores, or CDs. Yep. Um, I think another question that students often have is, um, what's the experience like um, being a student in the classroom? Um, is it you know, more of a, a lecture format? Um, do students have workshops? What, what's it like to actually be in the classes and, and to, to learn in your department? I can take this one. Um, so I would say for the first two to three years, it is very much just like the lecture format. Um, especially freshman year when you're taking all those prereqs, entirely like large lecture type thing for your math classes and your physics classes and all of that stuff. But the really nice thing about the AME department is it's very small. So any of the classes that are just like specifically four majors are normally less than 30 people in the classroom, especially when you get to like junior and senior year, it's oftentimes less than 20 people, sometimes less than 10 people in your class. So it does get very personal, which is nice. And it means teachers are really available to help you if you need help or, you know, have that one-on-one -on -one time, um, which is one of the biggest pluses of the department, I would say. But also, especially junior and senior year, when you're taking portfolio classes, those become more of like a group discussion workshop style type of thing because you are doing projects, a lot of work time and collaboration with your peers if it's a group project um, and more hands-on rather than just like sitting and listening for a long time. Another, another question a lot of students ask is, um, how do you find the, the balance um, between studying and, and being involved in other things, whether it's music related or not? Um, you know, we touched a little bit on study abroad, but um, you know, what about uh, being involved in clubs or other kinds of activities on campus? What's, what's your impression of that? I can, I can start and then Cindy can add anything that I miss or whatever. Um, I mean, as I mentioned, there's like the Audio Engineering Society student chapter um, that's largely made up of a lot of AME people, uh, either majors or just people who are just interested in audio. I'm pretty sure our president is not even technically, like, I don't think he's a, he's not a major of AME. He's just, he likes audio and stuff. Um, in terms of, you know, other clubs and um, ensembles, I would say probably a good a good amount or almost all of at least our class sitting in our class are musicians um so we're all in some type of music group um of some capacity whether it's like an outside like there's a, we have a lot of student bands um or we have a lot of those um music ensembles on campus so a lot of a good amount of them are like in jazz bands. Some of them, Cindy was in Wind Symphony. I'm in orchestra. Some of us are, um, a lot of us are in rock repertory ensemble um, and a bunch of all different things. Um, and so in terms of like balancing club and, and work, I mean, you're, you'll have to a lot of time for homework, but in general, I think um, the time management isn't too bad. Um, I was able to still do a lot of performance groups. I think I was in like three or four for most of my uh, undergraduate career until this semester when um, I just wanted to focus more on some other stuff, but that's not school stuff. It's just other stuff. <laughs> but um, I think overall uh, the balance between the two is not really too bad. Um, time management is something that you'll learn in your first year and then after that I think it it isn't like insanely hard or anything yeah I feel like Jessa covered that pretty well um 
I think everybody in the AME department is involved in some combination of like clubs and work and research and musical ensembles and stuff outside of classes. So definitely you'll be able to figure out how to fit all of that in with your classes. It's definitely hard at first, especially because I find that a lot of those first year classes do take a lot of time because they require labs and um, things like that. But yeah, definitely just join everything and try it and then like whittle it down as you go along to figure out what you like. How about a question for the professor? So, um, you know, a lot of our admitted students, um, you know, obviously probably have a, a number of choices where they could choose to enroll on, on May 1. Um, so what are some things that, that you think really make, um, you know, our department special and, and, um, and the University of Rochester a, a, a special place that, um, you know, you just wouldn't be able to find that somewhere else or we do that thing really well here um, or, or, or that sort of thing? Well, let, let me, I'll take a first shot at this May 1. The, um, the orientation of the AME program is very much toward uh, people who are interested in, in creating audio technologies. Um, there's quite a few programs that uh, are outgrowths of, say, music departments, and the focus is on recording engineering. And uh, although our program has recording engineering, our students are mostly interested in pursuing careers where they're creating new audio technologies. So all that stuff in the recording studio, someone had to design it and build it, figure out how to do all the algorithms and do all the programming and all of that. And so that's where our focus is. And so we're we're really at the the end of the spectrum of creating new technologies for audio. Um, although we do also cover sound design and recording, but um, you know, we designed the whole program with the the career path for, in mind for students to enter, uh, to go to companies that create new audio technologies more so than for people who just want to use audio technologies for creative purposes. Um, although, you know, you are prepared for that, but you also have this uh, deep technical preparation, which is unique, I think, in among audio programs in in this country. Yeah. So as Mark said, um, we trained our uh, our students and in several major areas, so our students can find their interests and decide what they want to do after they graduate, and this is also a kind of very unique interdisciplinary program. So we cover a lot of courses you cannot find in other like uh, music engineering program, uh, music technology programs. Yeah. And, and also, as, as Sydney said earlier, when you start a program, you may have one area of interest and then find yourself getting interested in totally different aspects of the program. Well, the, the AME program is very closely aligned with the electrical engineering program. It's an outgrowth of the electrical engineering department. And so there are some, some AME graduates who really go on to careers in electrical engineering type jobs. So you're, you're well prepared to go off and do uh, digital signal processing, um, you're trained to do digital signal processing and audio, but there's a ton of applications of digital signal processing. So both the design of algorithms and then the design of the hardware to, to uh, implement that. So, um, so you, uh, and, and we did that on purpose because, you know, we just wanted students to have a broad enough preparation that they would have the maximum flexibility in choosing their career path. So, um, so it can go. So we've had students pursuing careers, everything from doing sound design for games or movies, to uh, people who are doing electrical engineering type design jobs. Um, uh, we had, like, I remember one AME student, uh, um, Autumn Co, a couple of years ago, who uh, uh, she now works uh, at a 
the company that builds uh, radios. And uh, so I think she, she may work on the audio part of the radios, but these are radios for firemen and police and things like that. So, uh, so she has a job that typically they would hire an electrical engineer for, but the AME students uh, essentially have, have equivalent preparation. So, so I think that, uh, you know, you have a lot of choices when you're done. Mark, I was wondering if you can talk about uh, our master's program because Sydney and Jessa uh, have been admitted to our master's program. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as as we said, the electrical engineering department is the home of the audio and music engineering program, and the AME undergraduates take uh, uh, a number of courses that are in common with the ECE major. And so at the end of their four years, they are entirely prepared to become a master's student in electrical engineering. Now the master's program is uh, 30 credit hours and it can typically be uh, completed in two semesters or maybe three. And um, there's also, uh, we have a significant fraction of the AME uh, graduates do stay and earn their master's degree. I don't know what it is now, probably 30 or 40 percent. And um, and the reason for doing that is that if you want to work as an engineer in uh, a company doing you know interesting design work, um, having a master's degree um, will better position you uh, for career advancement. And a lot of uh, engineers may start work with their bachelor's degree and then uh, decide to get a master's degree uh, a few years in. And, um, and so I tell students that it's a good idea to just uh, do it all at one time if you can. And uh, so we have uh, uh, students can take a few courses that will count toward their master's degree while they're still an undergraduate. And so they can get a head start and Typically, the, our AME grads can finish the MS in electrical engineering in one year. And, um, and so I, I believe that it's a really good investment in your, your career. Um, and it will save you having to go back to school at some future time. So, so you know, in a, a lighter way of putting it, as I tell students, if you can stand still being staying in school for another year, you should just stay put um, until you just can't stand it anymore and you have to get out and, and do something else. So it's uh, it's a it's a, it's an open avenue. A lot of students take it and I think it's a very uh, prudent career move. I just want to quickly say so I think we're we're right at time now. Um, I, I can stay on for a few more minutes if, if uh, folks uh, want to stay on, but, uh, no worries if anyone needs to, to jump off. And I think there might be one more question in the chat as well. But I just want to throw that out there that we're <laughs> at yeah. the point. So. <laughs> well, let me just answer that last question about the job placement outlook. I think that it's very good. Uh, if um, it's, it's much better now than it was 10 years ago. And I think that the, uh, the, the growth of uh, smart speakers and, and, uh, um, right now, Amazon sells more speakers than anybody else. And so it's all of those smart speakers that are in the environment. And for example, Amazon has a huge, has a huge uh, uh, audio group. And so right now, the outlook is very good. I think students are, are finding jobs and internships quite easily. Um, it's always tricky to predict what things are going to be five years from now, but there are areas like virtual and augmented reality where audio is becoming more and more important. And so, um, so in my opinion, I think that the field is going to continue to grow in importance. Uh, but again, you know, all predictions are subject to revision. So, so. Um, yeah, thank you, Mark. And I think today, yeah, I was showing you AI. So probably we have AI for audio or machine learning for audio. That's also a very hot topic. Yeah. yeah. In the next few years. Yeah. Thank you.
Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you all so much. I, I have to just candidly tell you, whenever I'm on the road meeting prospective students, and I mentioned that we have this program, um, everyone's always like, that's so cool. I want to learn more about that. So thank you for doing this session tonight. Um, I'm going to, I'll put my email in the chat if anyone else would like to do so as well. But if, if students have follow-up questions, I'm happy to try to connect them with you. Um, and students, I'm going to put the link to our um, Yellow Jacket experience in the chat as well. So if there's more upcoming sessions that you want to check out or watch some of our past recordings, such as that study abroad session, um, feel free to, to check it out there. Um, but big thank you to Professor Lee, Professor Baco, to Jessa and Sydney. Uh, thank you all so much for, for joining tonight. Um, and uh, we, again, congratulate you on your acceptance to Rochester.